Hello and welcome to another video. I am Stephanie and in today's video I'm going to talk a little bit about the process of my latest sculpture, Den Wald vor lauter Bäumen nicht sehen. So that was just German <laughs> and the title of uh, the specific sculpture I'm working on. So this sculpture was made for a group show about the Grimm's fairy tales and I was invited to that show. That show is still running until the 20th, no not the 20th, the 12th of March in Arch Enemy Arts Gallery in Philadelphia. I was prompted for that show, on, not I, but everyone who was invited. It is a group show. We were prompted to pick our favorite fairy tale and and then make an artwork out of it or illustrating the fairy tale or something like that. In any case, I dived into the very many fairy tales that the Grimm's wrote uh, and it makes sense because they didn't actually write all the fairy tales. It's kind of an accumulation of all the tales that were told over centuries in Europe and then a few of their own. I pre-selected all the animal related fairy tales. Obviously I'm not I wasn't going to do any humans. <laughs> you know me. I, I don't I do not do humans. Yeah, after some thinking and some back and forth, I decided to go with the hedgehog and the hare tale. And that tale is basically it's a race between the hedgehog and the hare and they start to run and now obviously you would expect the hare to win and that is also what the hare expects. But the hedgehog has some kind of strategy where he works with his wife who looks exactly like him and basically when the hare arrives at the finishing line the hedgehog's wife who has hidden up until then jumps out and wins the race so to speak. The hare obviously doesn't understand the strategy at all and the hare wants to redo the race over and over and over again until finally the hare dies of exhaustion. So <laughs> it's it's not funny stuff. No. So I like that tale because it's basically a tale that is for the mind. Um, it's about thinking before acting and also trying to see the bigger picture and questioning why something isn't working when it should, if there's not a reason why it doesn't work. And so that's why I picked that specific tale over another. Now what I did here was to make a really tiny hair, which you're going to see later in the video, uh, why I'm going to sculpt it. It's really small. Never sculpted a mammal that small. And that hair is in the midst of the hedgehog on his back. And the back is looking a bit like a forest. And that explains the title because of the title. So it's German. The idiom literally means not seeing the forest because of all the trees. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It's basically you're not able to see the bigger picture because you get sucked into all the details. That's basically the gist of it. And I thought it was fitting for that tale and for the sculpture as well. So yeah, that's was all the thinking that went into that sculpture. Now, obviously, and I don't show it here because it's not because I forgot to show you and now I'm at, now I've edited it and now I'm I'm doing the voiceover. So it's too late for that. But I did a lot of sketching of hedgehogs before. That does help before starting the actual sculpture. You can also see my, my little cat Roger here, which is sleeping in my arms because I know you all love Roger. So I did a lot of sketching beforehand of the hedgehog and also of the hair. So I could have the shape, the overall shape of both mammals in my head before starting to sculpt. And this is something that I always do when I sculpt bigger mammals or animals or even shapes that I 
not familiar with or that I'm not as used to, I think it really helps as a sculptor to go, to go through a study sketching phase to just understand the shape better before starting to actually sculpt. It's not strictly necessary and with time you need it less and less just because you're kind of used to and mammals are all a little bit similar in the way that they are structured. But yeah, I find it helpful and I kind of like it as well to just sketch things out before sculpting them. And then I prefer as well to have it sketched out for size. As you can see here, the hair in the background on the paper, I drew the hair at the size I wanted. And so this is super useful to build the armature and then start sculpting because you have the reference that has the correct size. And then you just start sculpting and readjusting and moving on. Now the tiny hair was easier than I thought it would be, maybe because when you sculpt that small, you can get away with less details. But at the same time, I was a little bit worried because you cannot make any mistakes <laughs> because if you make the slightest mistake, it's going to look off. But yeah, it was kind of enjoyable. I liked working that small. I might work on smaller mammals once in a while to add to my sculptures. I don't know, we will see. Also another thing. Now, if you've been following my work for a while, I did stop to work with polymer clay for a very long time. I got back into it with the tiny rabbits for the Luna Year One, the Galaxy and Rabbits video that I made. I'm going to link the video in the upper right of the video if you want to see that one anyway. Um, so yeah, I've gotten back into polymer clay a little, mainly for two reasons. The first reason is pretty obvious. It's because polymer clay is really simple to use and you really have the time to get into details and readjust things and so on. So this is yeah, by far the, the main reason why I gotten back into polymer clay. It's very enjoyable as a medium to use. Yeah, no stress basically. So that's the first reason. Now the second reason is because I found acrylic paints to use on polymer clay that do not get sticky and that I enjoy using as well, which are the Turner acrylic gouache. I don't really have a lot of Holbein acrylic gouache because most of their reds, or not most, all of their yellows and reds are not light fast or not pigments I would... No, they are not light fast. The reds, <laughs> there are no pigments that are light fast. I mean, I get it. The Holbein designer gouache are meant more for illustrators and to be scanned. And so no problems with that. But at least you could have a few pigments that are reliable, uh, which is kind of sad that they don't. Now, Turner acryl gouache, they... Most of them are uh, not light fast in the reds and yellows, but you still have some that are. And then I realized that golden so flat is very similar and it also doesn't get sticky on polymer clay. So that's great. Well, at least that clay I'm using cos clay for this. So it doesn't get sticky on cos clay. Cos clay also, that polymer clay, is really accepting paint in a beautiful way. So it's not like Fimo or Cernet that are going to be baked to a very smooth, plastic-like finish. Cos clay has some texture to it once it's dried. It's also flexible, so that's, that's a bonus. But yeah, it's basically not completely plasticky, and so when you paint it, it's nice. It's really nice to paint. So those are the two main reasons. It's less stressful and it paints beautifully. That made me, I wouldn't say come back because I'm still using other clays and on the hedgehog, in the end, the polymer clay part is not the biggest part of the whole sculpture because the whole back of the hedgehog, the whole spikes are made with cold porcelain, which is what you saw in the beginning. So it's still very much mixed media and I don't think it can be avoided in the type of sculptures I'm going for. But yeah, I'm, I'm making a sort of coming back to polymer clay and uh, yeah, I suppose it's going to stay for a while. I don't know. It's I have a complicated relationship with modeling clays. <laughs> they're all plastic. There's it's just there's nothing perfect in there. And uh, yeah, it's just the back and forth. But yeah, for now I'm I've been enjoying using polymer clay, and it's been easier for me to deal with. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to keep using it for certain parts of the sculptures at least. 
On another note, I recently hurt my arm. Now, what happened was about two weeks ago, well, a little bit more when you watch this video, or at least when it's coming up, well, time-wise, it doesn't really matter, but I suddenly felt a quite intense pain in my right arm. And my right arm is my strong arm, so I don't really know how you say that in English. But yeah, I use my right arm to write and to work, so it's my strong arm anyway. And so I felt that intense pain, and I first I thought it was the tendon and tendinitis. Um, so I simply decided to rest and see how it would go. And of course it didn't, I mean, it was better after about a week of resting. So it was not useless to rest. And, but we're going to go back on that later. I think resting is important anyway. But yeah, after a week of rest, I still was feeling uncomfortable. So the first week I, I almost did nothing. I didn't really, well, I didn't work obviously, uh, but I also didn't do any fun work like studies or, you know, light sketching or color studies or stuff, stuff like that, which I would do if I would just rest mentally. And I didn't really cook as well. So my boyfriend did most of the cooking. So these are the two things that I did not do. And after a week I was feeling better, but clearly it was not, it was not doing perfectly well. I, it was, it's basically if I don't do anything, my arm was fine. But whenever I would try to do something, because obviously I got bored, so I did do some drawing after a few days, then I quickly, or the, the pain came quickly back. So it wasn't an intense pain, but it was uncomfortable enough for me to worry and also to think, well, maybe, just maybe, take it a bit slower these days. Since it didn't really get better, I decided to go to a physiotherapist because again, I thought it was tendinitis. And after some online searching, usually physiotherapist can help you with that. Of course, the one that I wanted to go to was on holidays. So I had to wait a few days more. Uh, and then I called her, got an appointment really fast, which was great. Like I called on Monday and the appointment was on Tuesday. I actually am re doing the audio because of that, because, <laughs> but that's, uh, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so I went to the physiotherapist and she was like uh, asking how I felt and what it was. And then she was, yeah, that's not a tendinitis. And then she said it was a uh, cervical bra brachial neuralgia, I think that's how you pronounce it. It doesn't really matter. It's basically the nerve that goes from your head through your shoulder and down to your hand, basically that whole nerve. And the causes can be very different. So it can be really something terrible or it can be just posture. So in my case, it's very likely it's posture because I get that when I work. And like many people, I forget to rest my forearm when I work. And especially I have been working recently with um, a sort of drawing table, but not a table. It's just a plank that I made. And so my forearm cannot rest when I draw. So it was nicer for my back, but it's not nice for my forearm. And so it slowly strained that nerve until it was too much for my arm to handle. And that's why I'm out right now. So she said to, well, <laughs> of course I need to rest a little bit more. That's nothing new, especially since I've been clearly overworking and I tend to work too much and too late and it's not okay. And I really should take my advice on that because I say that to everyone. I think daily working is not a good thing, but I still do it. So <laughs> I have no excuse. Anyway, my goal right now is to find the right working postures that won't hurt my arm, my forearm, my neck, etc. But it's proving to be challenging because when I draw on a flat table, it does strain or I, I get strained in my back. And she also said that my spine was too straight. So I don't have quite the mobility to work, I think, flat. So now I'm thinking, okay, so th this isn't <laughs> this isn't working. So maybe I should try to have a drawing table, but to have not just a drawing uh, plank, which I had not plank, but just, you know, a board basically that I made because the, the drawing board, I cannot rest my forearm on it. It's too small. However, if I have a drawing table, then of course you have a lot more space. And then I think you 
should be able to draw to put your forearm on the table and to rest so now i'm thinking of maybe changing my studio to have a proper drawing table when i do any kind of drawing or painting and for the sculptures it's less of an issue because i can sit straight and have my head straight and my arms rested on the table so i used to do that a lot and of course, now that I know what the problem is, I'm rethinking everything that I did over the last years because that pain I started to have in the middle, in the upper middle of my back is linked to that nerve. So now I understand better that this is the cause of all that slight pain I was feeling. And, um, and now that I know what is the issue, I can better work on it. So this is why I'm out right now. It's a bit frustrating because I have a lot of work to do <laughs> and I cannot even just rest mentally by doodling and stuff. I have to find ways to work better for myself and my body. Uh, so yeah, it's it's been a bit challenging. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually, I'm just glad it's not a tendinitis because that would have meant to rest, fully rest, not work for maybe a few months. And I was getting anxiety from that because, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I'm also rather stressed and anxious. And so that doesn't help because I tend to tighten my shoulders. That just adds to the problem. So yeah, it's a lot of things, you know, little things that add up and then end up with that nerve that is in a, a sorry state right now. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to talk about this because honestly, it's been on my mind all the time for obvious reasons. And uh, on that note, I also would like to stress out that you need to rest. I feel like we live in a society where hustle culture is at an all time high and everyone is always talking about working harder to achieve your goals and then you can achieve so much if you just put in the work. And to a certain extent, it is true. The more you work, the more you're going to achieve its math. <laughs> However, your, your body and your mental health are going to break if you do that. So you really have to rest sometimes. And I don't just mean taking a holiday once in a while, which you should if you can at least. And by holiday, I don't mean you have to go very far away, just have a proper break of a few days and change your mind. Maybe just go walk every day to not be in your studio all the time. But I think more importantly, you really need to stop working too much every day. I think every day you need to have some type of resting. It can be in the morning, it can be in the evening, whatever your schedule is. I know some people, they work late, some people, they work really early. So it's everyone is very different on that. But you cannot just get up, work, eat and <laughs> you have to sustain yourself. But just get up, work and get back to bed in, in the evening. That's not going to be sustainable in the long run. And I feel like it's easy, especially nowadays with the daily challenges, which I think are and I've done one. So I know what I'm talking about. They're really unhealthy because they force you and you really you can be really good as an artist to force yourself to work because you like it and you want to get better so it's easy for you to force yourself to just work more and more but in the long run it's going to attack your mental and physical health to the point where you'll have to rest and that's not fun it's better to rest in a good positive way than to rest in a forced way if that makes sense which brings me to another thing that I was realizing while having to rest these days. I think there's a good and a bad way to rest. If you put yourself on YouTube, and I know I'm making a YouTube video, but <laughs> if you put yourself on YouTube and watch nine hours of videos and you call that rest, then yeah, not, not good. It's quite destructive, actually. I think it's better to find a more constructive way of resting. And by constructive, I don't mean that you have to do something efficient, but just going out for a walk or even meditating, just sitting by yourself and just being are going to be much better for your mental health than to overconsume some kind of crap. Reading is also an effective way of resting 
I think in a positive way or if you can um, I don't know bake cookies or cook or you know something like that and of course if you don't have a problem with straining your with arm strains or some kind of body pain then maybe play around with your studio and your art it might not be work but maybe you just want to do something that is completely different from what you usually do just to kind of move paint around your your page etc although i would advise against this as an artist because we already tend to put a lot of time in your art studio and so maybe do something else although i must say i realized during the whole resting etc that i also have been craving doing personal things more in my work so just either studies or artworks that are not meant for any kind of art shows but which i just want to work on same goes with the sculpture of my uh, of my cat that passed away a few months ago i still haven't made the time to work on that sculpture because other types of works have to be done first and i think that is inherently wrong from me i think i need to put in some time every day or every week at least to just work on things that are not top on my priority list of work but that are on top or should be on top of my priority list of me feeling happy and doing things that matter to me and so this is something that I need to work on and that I'm not especially good at but yeah putting myself first once in a while <laughs> i suppose would be a good idea okay on that note and i think it was quite a long and rambling video i hope you found it interesting and you enjoyed the video if you liked it please leave a hedgehog emoji in the comment section below honestly you have no idea how much those emojis mean to me i feel like right now my youtube channel has so many people that are really supportive and I really appreciate that. It really motivates me to make more videos and I cannot thank you enough for that. So yeah, thank you so much. Have a lovely day, take care of yourself, be kind to yourself and I will see you in my next one. Bye!